All right, my next guest tonight has transformed lemons into sweet lemonade. Oh, I got to hear that story. She is most known for her ability to encourage and motivate people to be great. She's a recipient of the Career Masters Award and Michigan Woman of Excellence Award for her work in the community. And we're getting a fireside chat with her tonight, right now. Dr. Portia Lockett. Hi there. How are girl, you? Girl, where you at? Tyler Perry Studios. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing this evening? Oh, I am just amazingly blessed today and just excited to be a part of your show. You are just amazing. I was just watching that uh, amazing interview with Precious and my sister is the bomb.com.net.edu.org. Okay, let's just get that off the table. Let's just set the record straight. She's amazing. I so enjoyed that part of the show. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, she was definitely uh, uh, a great conversation. I love having people like her and you come on this, this show because this is what this show is all about. And you guys come on here looking all radiant. You look like you're about to go on a date tonight. What's going on over there? Well, you know what? <laughs> That's a secret to be kept by me, right? You got a lot of secrets. You never know what's going on. You never know what's going on, right? (laughs) No, but guess what? I'm here with you at the moment. So let's maximize this moment, right? Hey, I love the color coordination. That's lovely. It's all about the colors. All about the colors. Oh, look at that. You're going to lead us right into our conversation for tonight. (laughs) Okay. When I first heard about true colors, I was like, wait a minute now. Uh, and, you know, people look at because we always talk about, oh, somebody showed their true colors. Did they really? And I'm so glad you're here to talk about that tonight. But before we get into that part of the conversation, let's talk a little bit about you. Now, I would assume you receiving Michigan Woman of Excellence Award means you are from Michigan. Is Absolutely. that correct? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm a okay. Michigander, a Detroiter. I'm from the D. You from the D? Is, is it still cold D. in the D? It's still cold. It actually is warming up a little bit. It's supposed to be 60-ish towards the later of the week, so I'm excited about that. Okay. Yeah. All right, so born and raised in Detroit. Yeah. How did you grow up? So I grew up on the on the west side um, of Detroit, um, attended all public schools, you know, in the city of Detroit. Just a wonderful place to be um, in the Boston Edison area, you know, right around the corner of where the riots took place in 1967. So things were always going on in the D. And I'm proud to be a part of the Comeback City, you know, right now, um, attending, like I said, public schools in the city of Detroit. Went off to Eastern Michigan University, which was only about 45 minutes away from it. But I thought I was just totally away from the D, um, but always found my way back coming to the D because it's just a wonderful place to be. Okay. And growing up in Detroit, did you grow up in a single parent home, two parent home? Yeah, what was, was what was life like for you? You know, growing up for me, I grew up in a two family home. My parents were both very um, uh, involved in the church, Vo- grew up in a Christian home. And uh, every Sunday you're in church from Sunday school to the afternoon programs. Uh, my mother was from a musical inclined uh Uh, family. Everybody, all her brothers and sisters knew how to play an instrument. All of her sisters played for the various churches in the city of Detroit. And so needless to say, we grew up singing. So wherever my mothers and her sisters were singing and putting on afternoon concerts, they were like the Clark sisters before then. But somebody's husband said, you know what, we don't want you all going out on the road. So you need to stay home and be wives and be mothers. They just blew it for the entire family. I'm like, what? We could have been like the Clark sister family the whole nine yards, right? But anyway, past that, uh, you know, it was just wonderful. I was the youngest of uh, five children and um, always just got much love, lots of encouragement, you know, all of my life. I was always told that I could be anything, anything that I desired to be and just yeah, pushed me towards that. Did you believe that when you was told that? Absolutely. I really did. You know, from much from a childhood, um, I always wanted to be a teacher. I just knew from the very beginning that I was supposed to be in the teaching mode, which modulated into me being in a training mode. Uh, but my mother was a school teacher herself, and she would always have these little affirmations before affirmations were big. In the kitchen, she would have the things like, um, I'm the, the queen of the kitchen. I reign supreme. <laughs> then she would have another sign that said, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is your best. So everywhere you look, there was always something that was reinforcing you to be who you were born to be and expected to be in that household. Okay. And 
uh, are you an only child? Did you grow up with siblings? What's, no, what's yeah. your dynamics? Around? Right. So I'm the youngest of five children. Youngest of five. So, youngest so of five. What, what, you, did you consider life to be fairly easy for you? I know they always say the youngest child is the, the quote unquote baby. I don't know where that came from, but but you 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 were supposed to receive some sort of favoritism. Uh, was that the case for your you life? You know what? I think my parents were harder on me than they were the others because, um, you know, needless to say, you know, when you're, you're growing up and you're trying to find yourself, uh, some of my uh, siblings found life to be a little challenging because they chose to uh, get involved in challenging opportunities in life. I should say that. And what, so what were those kind of... opportunities? <laughs> don't, don't skip over that. Don't, don't just give me college words for that. What, what, what were the well, challenges? Well, you know, when you're out there just trying to find yourself getting around the wrong group of people at a certain point in life, um, I'm not going to put their business out there totally because, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to throw my sisters and brothers under the bus. But they are all phenomenal. Um, the ones of us that are still living. I lost my oldest sister last year to COVID. Um, okay. And she was just uh, just an amazing um, inspiration to me. She always called me her baby because she was old enough to be my mom. So by the time I came along, you know, um, everybody was kind of like doing their thing and and always encouraging me. But at the same time, my, my parents seemed to um, keep the pulse on me more so. So, for example, you know, my father would say things like, you're not going out on dates. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. He had this long list of things that you're not going to do. So what I decided to do is to get involved in everything that I could possibly get involved in after school. So if there was the marching band, if there was a, a choir, if there was the Spanish club, everything that I could possibly be involved in. I was there so that I didn't have to come home and just stay stuck in home mode, doing homework and just, you know, watching whatever came on TV. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. And so so as you develop into a young woman and then an mm -hmm. adult in adulthood. Yes. And you decide to go down this journey. How did mm -hmm. you come to colorism and helping people identify their true colors? Well, you know, from from way back when I was always that person that people would come to, you know, for advice and just mm. get uh, support or to have prayer. And so I was always in that mode. And so starting off, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, as a school teacher and then transitioning into training in corporate America, you know, doing work for uh companies like Ford and GM and uh, Detroit area of age and a lot of the different companies in the Detroit area, you know, and abroad. Um, it. This, this particular opportunity came to me one day about true colors. And I'm like, what is this all about? And so I got trained um, in the module. And then from that, that just opened up a plethora of opportunities for me to be able to walk into. And so with having the understanding of how it really worked and understanding that everybody has a personality. And once mm -hmm. you are able to um, really uh, accept who you are and understand your color, you can really truly understand who other individuals are and workplaces be become better to work in. You know, relationships are better to be involved in because you understand who you are and also who you're dealing with or in, you know, involved with, I should say. OK, now, now what does a person have to do? Is it something you can identify by looking at a person, gazing into their eyes, seeing the way they move, <laughs> hearing the way they talk? How do you identify someone's true color? You know what, well, because, you know, I'm used to doing this now, I can just have a conversation with someone for the most part, or someone could be telling me um, some characteristics of another person. And from that, I can pretty much pick up on what their color is. But if mm. someone really wants to know and take the color assessment, you can go online and there's a true color personality assessment called the true colors assessment. And so you look at a group of words and you de determine which group of words you can best identify with. And there is a tabulation of numbers. And after you do the whole correlation, you will be uh, um, a given the color that you are most dominant with. So there's four okay. colors. There's the blue color, there's the orange color, there's the gold, and then there's the green. And then it maps out, you know, how you see yourself and how others see you as well. Okay. What's my color? Well, you know what? I can't really tell right now because I don't really have that much dialogue. You, we haven't had that much dialogue about, you know, who you are and what you are. But I'm mm. I, if if I were just to guess, uh. I would say that you are a uh, probably a orange slash okay. green, a mixture well, of the I, two. I got two colors. <laughs> you have two colors. And a lot of people have two colors. It's okay. <laughs> so, so, so what would cause a person like me to have two different colors. And what does those colors mean? 
Okay. So it, like I said before, you ha- there's an assessment that you have to take. And so sometimes, you know, when you take the assessment, you will tell you that you have two prominent colors. Those are the colors, those those personality traits that really stand out about you. So I kind of give you the, the layout of what the colors really look like. So if okay. you're a blue person, the blue person typically is a very um, calm person. They don't like a lot of drama. They're the one who comes to kind of uh, bring some mediation. If there's some dynamics that is going that are going on, if there's a conflict, uh, the blue person is very passionate. They're very lovable. They like a lot of romance in their lives. They're like a people person. They really want everybody to love them. And they, they're really bothered if someone doesn't love them or they don't, they don't, they're not liked by everybody. And so, mm-hmm. but that, but the, at the same time, people kind of feel as if the, um, the blue person is that person who, who will just accept anybody saying anything to them that would just run them over, but they're really strong individuals. They just like peace. They like, they like harmony. Mm-hmm. All right. And then there is the the orange person. OK. And the orange person is typically that individual that just says, you know what? Don't give me the rules to the game. All right. Don't tell me how to do something. Just know that I, when I show up, it's going to get done. All right. Mm. And as, as it pertains to liking me, I really don't care if you like me or not, because I really like myself. And when I do something, I'm going to do it well. Right. <laughs> the party doesn't start until I get there because the orange has arrived. OK, that's the orange personality. <laughs> then there's that green personality. And what I find with the greens, they're more so those individuals have spent uh, qua- uh, quite a bit of time in the military or in the engineering uh, career. All right. They're mm-hmm. very um, um, analytical. They take their time to think out processes. They don't respond to um, a person's question right away because they have to analyze the situation. They want to analyze, first of all, why did you ask me that question before I even answer it? Uh, They're very organized in their thoughts. They don't mind being alone because they're learners. They would rather sit um, and, and read as opposed to maybe going to a movie. But if they did go to the movies, they would prefer going to see a documentary. They're, they're learners and they are very content with just being by their, that by themselves. All right. And then okay. you have the gold person who is typically a very organized person. You go over to the orange, I mean, the gold person's house and you will notice that in their drawers, everything is lined up. All their shirts are stacked up. The the, the hangers are this far apart. Uh, everything is, you know, organized in their closets, in the refrigerator, in their drawers, just in life period. And so sometimes when you have those, uh, the blending of the colors, sometimes people get along very well together, but sometimes they don't, depending on the individual. You're a gold person, aren't you? Well, you know, I am partly gold and blue. I'll be honest. When, the I, last time I took the assessment, I was partially gold and blue, and I was a balance of the two. Now, see, how, how was I able to determine that? I knew you was gold and blue before you said it. Did you now? How did I you know did. that? <laughs> well, one, because I can look at your, your personality. Like, see, okay. I, I do a good job of reading people by looking okay. in their eyes, looking at their mannerism, listen to the things they say. Okay. And you strike me as a very organized person. You need things structured in a certain way. And uh, I was like, yeah, when you gave me the definition of the colors, she's gold and she's blue. I knew that. Now, I didn't know you can have more than one color. You know, I thought, you know, if I'm black, I'm black. You know, I, I, I can be black and white. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson said that, I think. Did Michael Jackson say that? Black and white. <laughs> I think that was something that Michael Jackson said. <laughs> I, I think he got me there. Right. So, so <laughs> for our different. listening audience, if when they're looking at how do they determine the colors of others and themselves, is it because is it they have to take a assessment test first, or do you have some other secrets or recipes for them to be able to identify those? You know what? I always tell people to take the assessment. So I do a lot of uh, couples counseling, premarital counseling as well. And that's one of the tools that I use to be able to help them to understand each other. And if you can get through that, that, that process of understanding, you can deal with anybody. You can get along with anyone after you understand who they are, because typically people are not going to change. You just have to accept them for who they are. So, mm-hmm. so not too long ago, I was uh, doing a counseling session with a person that was a green and, and he never answered the question, you know, like right on point. So if she, she would answer, ask a question, he would never answer it right there. And that just really bugged her. And I explained to her how, how, what his makeup was. That's just a part of his DNA. So either you're going to accept him going into this marriage, that's just the way he is, or you know what? You're, you're not going to make it period. Mm. 
All right. So understanding and just, you know, being open to be able to be read and take the assessment to say, this is who I am and this is who you are. Let's take a look at how I see you and how other people see you. So sometimes the green person may come across very arrogant, like they know it all. And guess what? Nine times out of 10, if you ask them a question, they know the answer because, as I said, they're very versed, they're very read, uh, mm-hmm. they, they understand and they're very poised and they're very competent and very confident. And so a lot of times people just can't stand them and they're just like, oh, my God, this person just, oh, they're just all of the And it's like, OK, if you can't deal with that individual, then that's not somebody that you want to uh, interact with or be involved with for a long period of time. Now, in the workplace, you don't have a choice. But again, it can be an asset. If you have a green someone that is very analytical, that's going to analyze the the problem or the situation, then you're going to have the gold person who's going to keep everybody on track, organizing the time so we don't get off. And then you're going to have that person who is the orange who can bring some laughter and some drama and some happiness and some, you know, hee hee ha ha to the table. And then you're going to have that that blue person that is able to come in and just say, OK, let's just everybody settles down. You know, let's stay calm. Let's let's have some harmony. Let's have some moments, you know, so it could be a blending of all those colors together that can create something magical and wonderful. It's all the way you look at it and being open to how people see you. What's the color that a person can have that the audience want to stay away from or be uh, cognizant of, you know, because we meet people all the time in our workplace, Mm -hmm. not since COVID, but we meet people all the time, whether it be online. Let's say somebody's looking at they're, they're looking at online dating right now or they're looking to rekindle something with somebody. What's a color that you would see that come up about a person that you would tell my audience, hey, this kind of color, stay away from. You know what? That that's not um and I, I I can't answer that question because see everybody is different, right? So mm-hmm. there's no one color to stay away from. It's maybe a color that you want to um know more about based on you know who you are. So if you have two greens, you know, you're going to understand that this person is going to analyze you and you're going to analyze them. That you're organized, you know, um it, it's it's not about who you should stay away from or who you should gravitate to because mm-hmm. everyone's color is different. And so you're going to be drawn to someone normally who's very like you, but they also say that opposites attract. Yeah, they was drunk when they said that. So was the opposites attract? (laughs) Yeah, they was high. They was high (laughs) on something. They they didn't know. But it's something about that person that 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 is your opposite. You see a little bit of yourself in that person that draws you to that person. It's something that just sticks out. You can't quite put your finger on it. But guess what? After you get to know that person, understand that person, you begin to like that person. You begin to fall in love with that person. You decide to stay with that person and work through whatever issues that you have. It's Mm. okay. Do you think people gravitate to people because of the mystery or do you think some of us are problem solvers so we think we can fix people? Hmm. Probably a little bit of both. And, and the reason I say that is because sometimes people will see something that they know is wrong at the very beginning. We call those the flags like mm, that person says something that, that was not quite right or they did mm. something. And we have all these signals that say, stay away, stay away. But for whatever reason, we just want to like go in and challenge and say, you know what? Well, maybe if I spend a little bit of time or maybe if I take them to church or maybe if I do this or maybe I, maybe I can change her, maybe I can change her. You can't change people. Mm-mm. You just can't change people. So, you know, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for hurt if you're looking to change someone. If anybody is going to change anybody, change yourself. Look within yourself. What can you do to enhance yourself? So, for example, if you're, you, you know that people tell you certain things about yourself all the time that are kind of like a little negative quotes about you or some things that you need to work on, maybe you need to take a look inward. To determine, you know, what what about me? Do I need to uh, change? What do I need to modify? You know, how do I come across to people? You know, mm-hmm. what can I change? Start with the man in the mirror again, like Michael Jackson said. Start mm-hmm. with that person, the the inner man, the inner woman. Why do you think people find it difficult to l- be accountable for their actions, their words, uh, their choices? Why Why do you think that's so difficult for people to to say, "Hey, it's it's me. It's not everybody else." Mm-hmm. Because everybody wants to, I won't say everybody, but a lot of people want to just see themselves as perfect. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. They're in denial. We all have things that we need to work on because there is no perfect person. 
There's no perfect person on this planet, no matter how uh, how many degrees you have, you know, how many places you visited, how many uh, countries you've traveled to. There is no perfect person on this planet. And we all have an opportunity every single day to learn something new and to grow and to do better. No matter what it is that we're doing, we can always be better. Yeah, and I'll say they probably on expired medication. That's why they can't determine whether or not it's them or not. It could, could be. And there's a lot of people who need to be on medication who are not. A lot of people who need to be diagnosed who have not been diagnosed or misdiagnosed. True that. All right, so uh, if people wanted to connect with you online, how can they do so? Okay, you can go to my website, drportialockett.com. And you can also go to my LinkedIn, Portia Lockett, Facebook, Portia Lockett, Twitter, at Portia Lockett. So it's very, very simple. And I'm here for you, Portia Lockett. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Stout. I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix, Lord. 